Yo, what's good? It's your boy Noby Inf Gang for Noble Cinema. Today I'm joined by San Francisco's own, or even deeper than that, Hunter's Point's own, So Vicious. Yeah. She is a super dope up and coming artist who beats out a lot of the competition with lyricism and pure consistency. With over six albums under her belt and a huge collection of singles available online, she continues to prove why she is the next up out of the city. So Vicious, how are you? I am great. I'm blessed. I'm out here. I'm feeling good. Yep. Good. I'm glad yep. to have you. We go back uh, a good amount of time. Right. Even before that, my guy Nick Katz was fucking with you back then shooting videos. What was yes. that video again called? He shot I'm So Vicious. My, actually, my second video That's I crazy. ever shot. Yeah, How many years that. ago was that? Ooh, I want to say that was about 11, 10 years ago. That's yeah. insane. Yeah. Yeah, so you've been in the game for a minute. I yes, love yes, that. Yes. And, uh, and you've just been continuing to grow and get better and better. Um, let's start... Uh, back from the beginning, though. Let's let people yeah. know where you were from. Okay, well, I'm born and raised in Hunters Point, San Francisco. You know, I uh, grew up with my mom, my grandma, you know, uh, regular 80s shit, you know, a little kid outside grinding. I've always been into music, uh, just doing my shit. That's pretty much it. Yeah. What was it like growing up in Hunters Point? It was kind of cool. You know, it was like in the 80s, 90s, it was like real family oriented you know what I'm saying everybody knew everybody you know what I'm saying if you did something outside the neighbor could tell you to get put you in check you know what I'm saying now it's like people be like don't talk to my kid like that you know what I'm saying but back then it was real you know family all the kids got along you was it was safe to ride your back outside you know what I'm saying it was safe to go down the street to the park um that's pretty much how I grew up like so when I was doing my research on Hunter's Point, well, I guess they consider it Bayview Hunter's Point. Yeah, it's Bayview um, Hunter's Point. So when I was doing my research back in the day, I guess they used to call it the uh, America's most isolated city. Yeah. Which is kind of crazy. Did you right. guys feel like you were on like sort of an isolated place? Like, was that your whole world back Basically, then? Basically, we like on the southeast part of the city. So mm -hmm. we are in our own little corner. You know what I'm saying? Um, Bayview and Hunter's Point, it's the same thing. But Bayview has its own area too. Mm. And I actually, I didn't grow up in any projects, but I grew up in Bayview. You feel me? But I'm from the point too, because I've been all through there. But um, it's, it, yeah, it's like they got the houses and then they got the projects. So yeah, I grew up in the houses part, but you know. I'm yeah, so I was going to ask you because when I, I've been through Hunter's Point a good amount of times, and uh, there are like huge project buildings over there, but yeah. then there's also, like you're saying, there's regular neighborhood areas over there as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Right? And that main that main area over there is, what's that, 3rd Street? 3rd, that's the main middle street that goes up and down. That's where all the trains and everything go down, right? The T-Train. But back in the days, it didn't even used to be a T-Train. It was mm. the 15. You mm. feel me? So you got to know about that shit. If you right. rode the 15, yeah. <laughs> right. Up and down there, yes. So the sure. 15 was like the transportation, basically. Exactly. You up and down. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then back then... When you were growing up in Hunter's Point, what was that like being a young woman growing up in that environment? Um, it was cool. Like I grew up with my mom and my grandma. And shit, my mom was like in the streets, but I, uh, you know, I was. I don't know. It was just like regular. You know what I'm saying? Um, I didn't go outside. I didn't jump off the porch and start hustling until I was about 15. But being young, I went to all the neighborhood schools. I went to Charles Drew, Martin Luther King. Um, it was a school over there for a short time, Gloria Davis. I went there. Uh, I went to high school at Thurgood Marshall. So I've always been in my neighborhood. I've always been running around and, you know, seeing shit. A lot of hustlers and gangsters over there, um, drug dealers, you know, that type of shit. Like, it's everywhere. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, so around what time did you really get into making music? Was that when you were super young, or how did that come about? Um, I Actually, my grandma and my mom played the piano, mm -hmm. so I was about five or six when I started playing the piano and then um, I used to listen to my mom old school records she had 45 I used to use, listen to Al Green um, the Temptations like just all old school shit I used to fall asleep listening to that um, I used to go to school wearing my Walkman you know what I'm saying <laughs> they <laughs> Tapes, don't know about that the cassettes like I used to record my own mixtapes so really uh music uh came into me when I was young like I've been into music um Fucking, my first time going to the studio, though, I was like 17. Yeah, I was so, going to ask you about that. Yeah. Um, before that, though, yeah. um, I was watching an interview um, from you from back in the day, and it was talking about uh, poetry. Mm -hmm. Was that like a big 
shaping thing for you as far as like music goes? Yeah, when I saw, so I used to write poems when I was young, young. I used to do spoken word like in elementary school and I Snapping used to do fingers poems. and stuff. Yeah, I used to do <laughs> poems. Uh, I used to do that and then I used to want to be a singer. So at first I used to write, I used to listen to like Immature, Monica, Brandy. So I used to want to sing at first and I used to write singing songs. Mm. And then, um, you know, it just turned into raps. It turned into like, okay, let me put some bop to it. Like, so that's how I really started off. <laughs> um yeah and like can you remember back to like what your first studio session was like or absolutely like, yeah absolutely I used to uh shout out to my guy Ish he had a studio on Maddox in um, Bayview mm. um, it was my first time going and I recorded a song um damn what was the name of it I can't remember the name of it right now but that first time I went to the studio actually recording was like dope to me. Like I went home and I must have listened to that song over a hundred times. I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah, I got it. You know what I'm saying? And then everybody in the studio was pumping me up like, you dope, you dope. So every that first time I went to the studio was with at San Francisco Kings. I used to call themselves my guy Ish. So shout out to him. Yes, yes. And so around that time, like I'm just kind of like getting a vision for like how it was back then. Were you the only female artist that was like hitting the studio or? At that that time, wasn't a, that wasn't like a normal thing back in the day, right? To be yeah, like but actually, rapper. when I started rapping, you know who was popping at that time? Karina. Outrageous mm. Karina was popping. It was Kiwi the Big Beast, which is now Be Stella. Uh, it was a girl named Coco Chanel. She was popping. Those were all San Francisco artists. No, that's just the Bay. Just, oh, okay, gotcha. it was. It's real saturated now. But at mm -hmm. first, when I came in, it was not a lot of female rappers. No. Not at all. Not at it all. wasn't. Um, of course, Marvelous, she from SAC, but you know, of course. Shout out Marvelous. Shout out to Marvelous. And Lil Marvelous. And Lil Marv, yes. Uh, Marvelous was doing her shit. A lot of people used to compare me to her when I first started rapping. Mm. They used to be like, man, you remind me of Marvelous. So that was an honor to be, you know, because I listened to her in high school, her and Sebo and shit. So that yeah. was dope. Um, but yeah, it wasn't a lot of female rappers when I first started rapping. So I just be feeling like, yeah. I'm her. So it was, yeah. So, but <laughs> so that people could get a better understanding of that, though, you were in the studio and it probably wasn't that met, that much competition back then. Yeah, no, no, not at all. It was always dudes. It yeah, was never yeah. like any studio I went to. Uh, I started going to TC studio. Shout um, out TC. Shout out TC, big legend. Um, I was going to this other dude's studio. I can never remember his name, but he had a studio over there by Sunnydale by 7 Eleven. I can't remember his name, but I used to go to Eric a few times. Uh, yeah, and TC, how did that relationship come about? Because I, I was doing my research and watching a lot of old videos from back then where you were in his studio, which was, where was that studio? In Bayview. Was, okay, yeah, because I've been there yeah. a couple times too. Yeah, like um, right there on Revere. Yeah, shout out to Because he's a legendary producer out there Absolutely. too. Absolutely. Like so how did started... you guys connect that way? So basically, I used to be rapping with my partner, rest in peace, B. Rain. She was like, uh, we used to be called a group called Madam Hustle. Mm. So I used to rap with her, and she knew one of her uncles, like her OG partners, used to mess with TC. So she was like, I got a studio we can go to. And she ended up, um, Big Mac, is that his name? Baby Mac. Baby mm. Mac, that's his name. Um, so she took us down to TC, and that's how I met TC. So the first time we started recording this shit, I was like still in the street, still doing the street shit, and I always TC, see TC, and he'd be like, you got to come back down here. You got to fuck with me. So yeah, and that's how that's how I met TC basically through her and uh, Baby Mac. Yeah, tight. And for people that don't really know who TC is, man, he's a legendary producer. Man, he didn't yeah. produce for like Eleven Five, you know, uh, Cold War Hustlers, RBL. Mm -hmm. um, he just more than that. He's just he's a legendary producer, and people need to give him his flowers. And a lot of people need to interview him because he has a lot of history that people need to hear. You know TC, what I'm saying? TC, reach out to me. I got you. Let's yeah, get it. Yeah, <laughs> TC definitely need to get in here, man. A lot of people like overlook him, and then a lot of the old or the young new artists don't know who he is. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, like, people got to know that history. That's important for sure. For sure. Yeah. Definitely. Um, so, let me ask you this: Growing up in San Francisco, how did that influence your music? Did, was, did I have a big influence on it? Absolutely, because at the time when I was like, I grew up like in the 90s, and at that time, you know, Fote was popping, RBL was popping, Quinn was popping, Mess was popping. So a lot of people influenced me. And, you know, I grew up, like I said, I had the old school cassette. It used to be the, um, the shop on third. He used to have all the tapes. 
Um, you know, I used to go in there, buy me a cassette, and yeah, it was just like everybody influenced me, and I used to want to be like that. Like, ooh, I could do this. You know what I'm saying? I remember one time I ran into Fote. It used to be a, a record store in Ceremony called The Warehouse, mm. and he was in there signing, um, you know, autographs and shit, signing flyers. And I went in there, I was about probably nine. I went in there like, I be rapping. And he was like, well, spit a rap for me. And I froze up. I got scared. You feel me? But Fo, shout out Fote, man. He, uh, you know, he's real. He's a legend, too. You know I've been there before, too. Yeah, I, I got to, froze up. For I real. used to rap, too. And, like, there'd be moments where people, well, spit some. He you. just, uh, <laughs> Right. Uh. At that time, I didn't know. And he was like, man, you got to be ready. He was like, anytime somebody asks you, to rap, you got to be ready. So you that always that. stuck with me. Yeah, you ain't sure. never gonna freeze up again. Never though. again. Yeah, I don't be freestyling, but I, you feel me? I spit some shit for you though. So <laughs> when I was doing my research um, on you and stuff, I was looking back on stuff like the HP Gangstress music video, which was right. like twelve something years ago. Right. That's a wild music video. Right. <laughs> when I'm looking at nice. there's fights and shit right. going on. There's like hella money back, like people holding up hella money. There were scrapers on the whips. Right. I mean, excuse me, spinning <laughs> rims on, on the, the scrapers. Right, right. So can you take me back to shooting that? Do you remember? Because there was, yeah. I feel like that was a very good showcase of how San Francisco used to be, at least in the hood back in the day. Right. Can you take me back to that day? It was lit, it? man. Hell yeah. That was my first, actual first music video. Yeah. Uh, shout out my guy, Kilo, rest in peace. He shot that for me. Um, he was kind of like my guy, Infinity Now, who be with me all the time, like getting shit doing shit. Um, he fu- it was just lit. That was like really a random day. We was really sh- out there shooting dice, really out there. It was a fight. Like it was, <laughs> it was really natural shit. So, so the fight that broke out, you just caught that on camera? Yeah, it was, at, it was on Crusader. <laughs> yeah, we was going down third. I was shooting a video down third. I'm like, I'm gonna go start from the, uh, I started from the library on Revere uh-huh. and I walked down third. It was just catching everything. We oh, sh- so you guys were on foot? Yeah. Yeah. Damn. And um, I had my, my, my BD's, uh, Caddy was in the video, the uh, Caddy on rims on the 22s. Uh, yeah, so it was lit. Like, back in the day, she used to be lit. You used to could be on, like, Kirkwood, look up third, and there'd be so many people outside. Like, yeah. just packed. Now you go to third, that shit dry as hell. Ain't nobody, you can't see nobody. Like, it's just, yeah, so back in the, like, that was, like, early... 2000s, you know, it used to be lit on third. For sure. I think that's like a, a thing that a lot of people won't understand about how the bay used to be, at least in the hood, is like yeah. everybody used to be outside. It, it used, used to, to be, people would be deep. It used to be lit. Now motherfuckers didn't get, got killed yep. in jail. It's just, it's sad though. We ain't doing all that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> also in my research, um, I was watching a K Poo interview from way back in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, and you were in there talking about you had a project that was dropping and you were talking about, well, it's not online, but you can get a CD from me hand to hand. Right. So yeah. you were really out here hand to hand selling the CDs. Trunk, man, yeah. That was like, when I first started rapping, that was the thing. That was like to have a physical copy CD. Like motherfuckers still had CD players in their cars. You know what I'm saying? You so had to be the only woman doing that though. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like for my section, it's no other female rapper. Yeah. That's why I'd be like, you know, well, I don't want to say that. But especially wanna... selling CDs yeah, out the trunk. Yeah, selling CDs at that time. I ain't that never time. had a woman pull up to me like, hey, you want to buy a CD? <laughs> I Hold on, who is this? Right. No, for real. So I was really out the trunk with it with flyers because I, that's what I was used to happening to me growing up. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I was used to people hopping out with a CD, hopping out with a flyer. And I'm to this day, I will still get CDs pressed up because it's fe- it's physical. It's always cool to hand somebody something. And I used to, I grew up in an era where you open up your CD, you open it up, it got the pictures, mm-hmm. it got the lyrics in there, like it got all it. So that shit is dope to me. It's still keeping the, you know, the old school feel of it. So yeah, I definitely used to be doing that. Even with the singles, you'll have one, one a, song, a CD with one song on it and just a cover. Crazy. Like with the plastic little uh, thing, the jewel case or whatever. And you were, how were you getting these CDs made? You were going to um, somebody who was printing them out? Yeah, pressing them up. Like, uh, I forgot who was pressing my shit up back then. Um, I think Kev, and uh, he was in, he in Richmond, he was in Richmond. Kevin, I think he was pressing my shit up, but yeah. Um, and you would buy what big ass bundles of them and just give them. And yeah, just sell it would, them out? It used to be like that to where you could you could only buy like twelve hundred of them. Ooh. Like so hella you get city. A pallet. Yeah, <laughs> big ass box full of CDs. Like, do you still have those? I still got some under construction CDs. I had like twelve hundred, and then which uh, is on iTunes, right? Yeah, that's yeah, on iTunes. So I seen My that. first actually uh, CD, the Gangstress, that's not on online. So I had just dropped the video 
a few months ago called Pussy Pleaser. It was like a mixtape. Uh-huh. And um, that actually, that song was never digitally. It was always on a CD. So, oh, okay. Yeah, I still got my, I still got a couple CDs that I kept for myself. But. That's fire. Yeah, I think there's like a renaissance coming back now of, especially because streaming is paying so little yeah. that people are starting to realize if we bring back the physical aspect of a CD, right, you can make some really money. enjoy that. Hell yeah, you know absolutely. You could sell a CD for $10, man. Press well, and, and also $20. vinyl and shit's coming back too, which is hella mm-hmm. crazy. Yeah. Like, so you know that people are like working towards that. Like right. people want that actual physical thing. Right. Okay. So we've kind of gone over like the basic, you know, history of So Vicious. How would you feel... What would you feel like was the point that you gained your voice as so vicious? Do you kind of remember where you were like, all right, I got this? Right. Um, I feel like early on, early on, uh, when I first went to the studio, like I said, I always got it. Of course, as an artist, you got to find your style and, you know, grow and develop. But I feel like I've always had it. But what like solidified it is like, I just been consistent. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Just being consistent and people seeing me and... You know what I'm saying? It's just, it just it takes a long time to get to where you you know you feel comfortable and where people recognize you and give you your flowers and shit. I just feel like a lot of people give up and they don't stick it out. Like now I pop out to shit by myself. You feel me? Now I'm with my manager, but at first, you know, people people fall off. They can't stay the course with you. And that'd be, you know, that'd be the thing. Just gotta stay consistent. I yeah, and like, I think consistency is definitely in anything you do. I think that's very important. Yeah. Um, and I've seen that with you because, like I said, I mean, I heard of you back in the day when my boy was shooting your video. So you've been doing this for, you know, a good amount of time. But it it also helps to solidify your name if you can build a good structure before you just come out. You right. know what I mean? And I feel like when I really felt it is when I got the stem. Like, if you listen to a lot of my old music... And the intros of all my songs always say, Vish, look. Mm. So before anything before that was like, you know, now I'm like stamped as myself now. You know, every verse I'm starting off like that. So Yeah, because I could hear like listening to your older stuff. Like there was a moment where um, I could tell you found like your wave. Right. You know what I mean? And I'm like, okay. Even, even you know, as much as like six years ago, I was right. like, she still had it back there. You know right, what I mean? Like right. even probably further back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to you for staying consistent too. Yeah, thank you. All right. Yeah, let yeah. me ask you this. A lot of artists say music is just music. It isn't really based in reality. How much is your music influenced by your real life? All, all of it. Okay. All of it. I'm not no fairy tale rapper. Like everything I spit is something I've been through, I've seen. Or like even a partner coming telling me they've been through something. I always I'm always rapping about something I didn't been through. You feel me? Like I can't rap about being a millionaire because I don't have a million yet. I could talk about wanting to get it though. You feel me? Or dreaming or manifesting that. So that's everything is real. I'm not no fairy tale rapper. How niggas be like? I grew up with no food in the refrigerator. No, nah, I really grew up like that. Like you feel me? I really grew up on eating government cheese and peanut butter and shit. So motherfuckers. That fabricate shit. I'm not that type of rapper. I really talk about what I've been through and real life shit for sure. So when you think about like making a record, what influences you more? The negative aspects of life or the positive aspects of life? Um, just everything. Whatever I'm feeling at that time. When I get a beat, what a beat has to pull the lyrics out of me. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I already get like the harmony in my head. You know that uh, whatever I'm feeling at that time. You know what I'm saying? I think music. Music hits something in your soul, your nerve, you know what I'm saying, to make you want to talk about whatever. So that's how I kind of do it like that. Definitely. Yeah, because I can tell there's like certain records that I hear you rapping on and I'm like, she's like spitting her heart out on yeah. this shit. <laughs> you Absolutely. <can> <laughs> Especially like a lot of like the, the relationship type songs. Like I hear certain stuff that you say and I'm like, damn, she needs I to honestly, get that out. I honestly feel like that's my lane. Like, yeah. I could do some turn-up party shit. I could do some serious shit. I'm very a versatile rapper. Yeah. But I feel like relationship shit, because a lot of females don't rap about that. A lot of females are, you know what they talk about, sex, they pussy, ass, <laughs> money. You feel me? But I feel like that's my lane. Like, I could rap about that. Like, kind of like Eve used to do. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, I, um, yeah, that's pretty well, much Well, and, and that's funny you say, like, Eve, because, like, the art, the women artists that we grew up on, like I know this is hella old school, but like the brat. Yeah, no, that's got, definitely. You got Missy Elliott, Lil you got, Kim, like, even you said, Kim. Even Eve is like a very good representation of like the women rappers that we grew up on. Lauren because Hill. it was more of like 
not showing ass and like titties. It was right. like a res- like you better fucking respect me. You feel me? Right. Like, Queen ego Latifah. Slap the shit out of you. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, for real. Straight up. So yeah, I, I definitely respect that about you too, and I feel like you hold that down and you hold yourself very um, highly and respectable. So I fuck with you for that. Right. That's pretty okay. It. Um, let's get into this then. Uh, how did you and Black Sea of RBL Posse get connected? Uh, well, basically, you know, he's from the same neighborhood I am. You know, I grew up listening to him. That was like one of my first tapes I got, like in 92, I want to say. Um, you know, I got that CD and I, like, he was like my idol. Him and Mr. C and Hitman, like they was going crazy when I was growing up. Um, so I've always been a fan, always been a supporter. And then as, you know, we from the same hood. So of course, you know, motherfuckers tapped into whoever coming up out their hood rapping and shit. So we just connected, you feel me? I just did a song with him last year uh, to the bag. You actually shot that, you feel me? <laughs> um, so yeah, it's just an honor to work with legends. You know what I'm saying? Like I dreamed of doing that as growing up and to be able to really work with him is, is dope. You know what I'm saying? And- as far as being somebody who grew up in Hunters Point, Bayview, Bayview Hunters Point, what was it? Did you notice like them? when you were younger and like seeing them coming up or I was like- I was actually yeah I, I was young and then my cousin so sick real he used to be a co-world hustler so that was my cousin so yeah I um you know what I'm saying I've been around the rap shit been seeing them been knowing them my auntie used to listen to them in the house so I used to be listening to it so that's what kind of and my mom used to even slap RBL so that's, that's what crazy. you know what I'm saying that's what really got me on it so that's a full circle moment full circle it's like <laughs> it feels it feels good like you know what I'm saying to work with somebody you looked up to like that's dope yeah that's hella dope um how about alias management and alias like how did you guys link together cuz he's your manager as of right, right now right right absolutely so yeah. how did that come about uh we just been seeing each other you know he fucked with RBL he did mm-hmm. he's day manager too so you know what I'm saying um uh, it just only made sense. You know what I'm saying? We both from the same neck of the woods. We got the same values, morals. You got to have a connection with your manager. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. So it's definitely dope. We got the same vision. Um, he believe in me just like I believe in him as a, a manager. Like he he provides the thing a manager should pro- provide. You definitely. know what I'm saying? He see me already having motion. You know, he got motion and we come together and we can add to each other. Like, you feel me? We fill each other cup. So that's how it just works. You know what I'm So saying? that's a good question uh, that I want to ask you too, as far as how important is it as an artist to have a manager or somebody that can kind of build you up in that way? Well, first of all, you got to have something to manage. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, okay. Okay. <laughs> you have to have something to manage. A, a person can't just think they need a manager off top. Mm. Like, what if, like, you already have to be doing something yourself. You have to be able to bring something to the table as well. You know what I'm saying? So people that say, oh, I need a manager. I mean, you need to build yourself up first. You know, you need a builder. And this is not Bob the Builder. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> we need... Um, that's that's what it is. It's important to have a manager. It, absolutely, when you're at that level to where, okay, now it's, it shows coming in. It's people tapping in with you. You got interviews. You got this and that. And you need somebody to manage that shit. Like, you feel me? So help you choose your song delivery. Like, I mean, your song uh, catalog, whatever. You just, it, it's, it, it's very important. For me, I feel like, you know, I already have my shit going. So a manager is adding to what I already have and able to vouch for me, be that voice, be the bad guy sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Be able to, okay, she not doing that for this, we need this, we need that. Organization, that's what a manager does, you feel me? So, and yeah. I feel like that's such a good point as far as what you said about not everybody needs a manager yeah. right off tops. Yeah. Because I feel like some some people get that fake image in their head that a manager is just going to hold your hand and like... And then people think your manager finna pay for everything. No. That's yeah. not a manager is not that. Like, you feel me? If a manager wants to help and pay for shit, yeah. But at the end of the day, you're supposed to be already having that shit going yourself. Yep. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's not it's not a label like a label. Like, you know what I'm saying? He's not signing you to no deal yep. or not like not like that. You know what I'm saying? It's like you gotta figure the shit out. It's right? gotta be a business. Exactly. And it's gotta work out the right way. But exactly. I think a lot of people, like I said, I think they get that idea that a manager is gonna hold your hand and and get you what you need, but at the end of the day, you You're have not, to be the product. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The dope gotta sell itself. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, but the the manager is just gonna help it get up, get on the plane, and go where it needs to go. Right. <laughs> yeah. Just yep. that that extra, like right, left, right, left. You yep. feel me? How do you feel about the state of female hip hop? And are you a fan of the new artists that are blowing up? 
Um, honestly, I feel like the state, I'm very proud because it's a lot of female rappers now doing that shit and it's kind of, you know, we doing better than niggas at the end of the day. I just feel like the state of it far as the content of the music, I just, I'm not a fan of every song being about pussy mm. and dick and mm. taking a nigga money and sexualized. I'm not a fan right. of that. Um, I feel like anybody doing their thing is great. It's awesome. But I feel like we have to put more substance into the music. You know what I'm saying? Um, I feel like it's it's always good. You know, we know this shit been male dominated for years. So it's glad to see. I'm glad to see a lot of females doing their shit. But I just wish as women we could hold ourselves higher to a higher regard. You know what I'm saying? I wish we could stop being so sexual and you know, that's a part of it, but I just feel like, for me, everything is not finna be sexualized. You know what I'm saying? I grew up as a tomboy anyway, so that's not me anyway. Um, I'm quick to do a, like a sexy photo shoot, wear something sexy here and there, but just everything is not gonna be that. And I just feel like, that's what I feel about it. Uh, I'm not a fan of that, every song. I'm not a fan of, you know, selling yourself short to get to the next level, to, to yeah, you you know having sex with people or sucking them up to get your song on the radio, or to you know elevate yourself. I just feel like your, the 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 music, and you should you should speak for yourself. The talent. Yeah, for sure. And like, as far as like that goes, I think that's a very good <laughs> point because you no, have sure. a good amount of versatility too. Right. You know what I'm saying, which is like very important. I know certain things like people want to get to that finish line quicker, so maybe some people do some crazy shit like that. But yeah, um, they want they want instant gratification when this yeah. shit is supposed to be ten toes down. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Okay, so let's go to this too. Um, Keith Lee visited the Bay Area recently. I don't know if you've seen that. I did. And soon after left uh, due to not feeling the environment. Uh, how do you feel about this situation? Oh, I feel like it's ugly. It's reality, though. You know what mm. I'm saying? I feel like people, a lot of people mad at him because he said the food was nasty or, you know, he's seeing tent cities every motherfucking where. But it just is what it is. You know what I'm saying? I do feel like he didn't hit. We do got some dope food spots out here, though. I do feel like he probably didn't hit the best spots. He didn't get the best choices. But I'm not mad at him for feeling how he feel. He got poisoned at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? Like, that shit is crazy. Like, I'd be irritated. I'd be in the city. It's a lot of places. A lot of people say the city got the best food, but I'd be tired of that shit. I'd be coming over the bridge to find something to eat. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's Where like, do you go? To Oakland? Yeah, I go to Oakland, okay. uh, Walnut Creek, uh, Concord. Shout out Walnut Creek. Me Shout too. out Walnut <laughs> Creek. Yeah, like Concord. Um, it's a lot of people, up and coming chefs. Shout out Luxurious. Shout out Chef Uwe. You know, uh, shout out who else? It's a lot of dope, you know, people that's up and coming. You know, cooking and shit. Shout out Chef Cleese. I just had my party at his restaurant. Nice. Uh, Pierre Pierre, you know, uh, Jack Boy. Shout out to them. But um, yeah, it's just, it's fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Like the baby, we have to do better. And it's really politicians and shit. I don't really get into politics, but they got to do better, man. They building shit. They need to get these people off the streets. It's crazy. People don't even want to come to the city as a tourist. Like people getting bipped. It's just, it's a lot. So I feel them. You know, he, yeah. So let me was, ask. Let's go a little deeper on that because I'm very curious about for somebody from San Francisco. Like he man. said, for one thing, that San Francisco is not a tourist space anymore, and it's he basically said it's like Gotham City. How do you feel yeah. about that comment? Um, I don't feel it's like Gotham, but it is. <laughs> it is bad. It is bad though. It's bad. I'm not gonna lie. Like uh, growing up there, it from like when I grew up to now. It's terrible. You go to the L's, you will see. It's like, I feel like something's going to happen. I feel like they setting this shit up. Like, like every, it's so many knocks and dope fiends and just everything down there on Golden Gate, Turk and Taylor, like Eddie. It's bad, bro. Like, it's bad. Like, you go down there, you get your shit bipped. Like, it's no, everything downtown is closing. Like, the mall finna close. Like, there's no stores on market no more. I used to go to market. I used to cut school to go to market and get some shoes when they was coming out. Stand in line for some J's and shit. Like, you feel me? Now, it's none of that. Like, you feel me? It's Did you see all the videos? They posted this TikTok of all the stores that shut down in SF. Yeah. It's, that was insane. It's bad. Like, it was the big stores, too. Yeah. I feel like, um, yeah, like the mall, like uh, Nordstrom's, all the shit. All that shit is closing. I feel like like uh, tourist, touristy spots will be the Golden Gate Bridge or Pier 39, like, I would not recommend coming to, like, I, like people say they want to visit San Francisco. It's like, 
you know, because I'm from there, so it's different, you know? And it's a lot of shit I haven't even... I have never uh, went to Alcatraz, you know what I'm saying? It's Damn. like certain shit I have never done, and I live here, but... Yeah. That's like a tourist thing to do. You we know don't what I'm need saying? to do a vlog or something and go to Alcatraz. Yeah, we should. <laughs> like, I've never been to Alcatraz. I need to go. I walked over the Golden Gate Bridge. I did that. Uh, rode a bike over it. But, like, it's just the, the city is sad. It really is. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I don't know. I just feel like he, he's valid to where he feels. You know, that was his experience. Somebody else might come and have a better experience. You know what I'm saying? Um it's definitely not like how it used to be, though. Not at all. Not so at all. let me ask you this, too, because this kind of came into my head as far as like somebody who. So, you know, Bayview Hunters Point is not really known to be the best neighborhood ever nah. as far as like nah. crime and stuff like that. How is it to kind of grow up in a place like that and then kind of see the outside areas of San Francisco decline even worse than you know, what that even was close to. Because yeah. you have the dope fiends everywhere, like you said. Yeah. It's like zombie land out there. Right. Like. Zombie land for sure. Downtown. Downtown is way worse than the point is now. Like, downtown is terrible. Like, you know what I'm saying? The point, we got our shit, but it's real gentrified now. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So they didn't move everybody out. Um, it's a lot of... Like, back in the days when I was start coming outside, early, like, late 2000s, I mean, early 2000s, like it was, you would not see no white person walking down third with a dog, <laughs> jogging Asian. You would not see that like right. at all. So now it's that. You know what I'm saying? So now you can see the difference. You feel me? And um, yeah, I, I feel went like to the shipyard out there, and like there's a neighborhood right there where you can look out to the water. That's Harbor, probably. and it's like West super Point. nice. They got like brand new house. I'm like, yeah, they they gentrify. They right now they remodeling West Point. You know what I'm saying? Like they already did Harbor, like the back of Harbor. Um, Oakdale, they did them over. Um, yeah, it's crazy. It's like it's, it's gentrified now. Um, Do you think that the that San Francisco is safer now or more dangerous? I think nah. I think it's more. I think it's safer. That the Hunters Point is safer okay. for sure. Um, I think it's more dangerous far as you getting your shit broke into. Yeah. Um, Have you been bit? Now, I haven't been bib yet. Never been bib. I got my whole Knock car. Knock on wood, by the way. I got my whole car stole, though. Oh, oh, shit. So that was a few years ago. I know who did that, and, you know. I think you might be the but, last person in the Bay Area who's not been bib. Shout out to you. Yeah, I have not got bib bib. I don't want to. Don't do yeah. that. Don't do that. But I make sure that I got my Tupac hey, air. I got my Tupac <laughs> air freshener in there. They got to know this a nigga car, man. I ain't got nothing in here, but. I know in Oakland they got uh people, they leave their windows down, trunks mm -hmm. open, hood open. Mm -hmm. But then that's crazy too, cause a nigga might steal your radiator. You know what I'm saying? So we gotta we gotta be careful. A nigga might Take steal your battery. Day. Like, yeah. Hey, you get so, your air freshener taken, that's <laughs> fucked up. You come back mad as hell. Mad as fuck, yeah, no. But I yeah, feel I like heard. nah, I feel like back in the 90s and shit, it was more so turf war type shit. It was right. more so gang niggas getting into it. You feel me? But now I feel like it's just random motherfuckers. You come and you got a license plate that's out of state. You got that sticker. They know you got it in a rental. They going to bip you they for sure. Your ass. So yeah, I just, uh, yeah. It's the city. I would not uh, recommend like if somebody was like, oh, I want to come to the city. I'm not going to be like, oh, go to the point or go to even Fillmore. Like Fillmore is more like a um, kind of touristy spot. They got more shit over there, like the avenues and it's, it's just really not. Like, I don't know. People just come here for that bridge, you know? So that's pretty much it. So let me ask you this, though, to go back to the food stuff. Can you give me one or two spots that, say, if Keith Lee say, yo, so vicious, where do I need to go? I would. I just said him. Shit, Pierre, okay. Pierre, I fuck with him. I fuck with Modern China and uh, Wanna Creek. What about uh, in the city, though? Um, shit, the chicken lady, she doing her thing. The chicken lady. Uh, yeah. Describe, what is this? What is she, this? Don't, she don't even got a restaurant, but okay. she sets up. She's a pop-up. Shout out her. Fire. Chicken lady. Uh, she do her thing. She got all type of flavors and shit. I fuck with her. Um, I fuck with, um, damn, sis, damn, I'm mad right now. I can't think, I can't think of her name, but she do be doing pop-up. She actually work at Pierre Pierre. Mm. Uh, she do her shit. I don't really, um, honestly, I don't really fuck with too many restaurants in the city. It's like the thing long P.F. Chang type shit. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I fuck with like, I try to support people that's, you know, up and coming yeah. cookers and shit, like yep. pop-ups and shit. Like, um, yeah, that's fine. And then too, my diet my, right now is like, I don't even really eat meat like that. Mm. So I be 
you on, on some the, healthy you pescatarian shit. Pescatarian or pescatarian. I still okay. fuck with seafood for sure. Yep. Um, I'm trying to slowly wean myself off of that, but I'll be drinking smoothies, vegetables. I'm a vegetable person. Okay, keeping so, it yeah. healthy. Yeah, trying to, you know, that's how I keep that six pack right. Hey. Why y'all asking? Nah. I got you. <laughs> yeah, sure. All right, up. cool. So um, I see you do a lot of collaborations with female artists as of lately. Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts on female unity in the Bay and does it exist? Um, I feel like it does. I feel like it's a lot of drama, but I feel like, uh, you know, you numbers are better. Like, you feel me? When you have unity, you kind of win. But a lot of people egos be in a way. Mm. It's it's kind of ugly, you know what I'm saying? Um, a you lot feel of like there's more drama being a female artist than it is being a male artist. Absolutely, I feel like females. I feel like females could work together more than males. Mm. But I do feel like females um, have issues as well. Right. You know what I'm saying? I feel like females be on a high horse thinking they better than somebody, or it be over a nigga, or it be weird. You feel me? I just feel like, and then. Uh, you can't work with this female because this female don't fuck with her. She might feel a certain type of way. So it's politics. So it be, and it, be, it be politics. Okay. It be politics. And I just feel like I stay out of all of that. I'm uh -huh. really neutral. Smart. I'm really cool with everybody. If somebody don't fuck with me, that's their own issue. Because yep. I really support and fuck with everybody. I share people's shit. Um, you know what I'm saying? And I, if it's not reciprocated, then that's what it is. But at the end of the day, I just feel like it'd be hard to, oh, I work with her. And some females not like that. They know I'm not like that. So they... If they got beef with somebody, they might let me know, like, I don't fuck with her. And I'd be like, oh, okay, well, you feel me? <laughs> oh, okay. I do, but Anyways. I'm not in high school. I'm really, that and then that too, I'm older. I'm like, a lot of people don't know, I'm like older. So I don't be into that high school drama, messy shit. Like, bro, I'm trying to do music. You feel me? If you dope and I fuck with you, I'm going to rock with you, period. Like, that's what it is. A lot of females be, don't want to fuck with a motherfucker. If y'all dope and y'all can make some dope music together, fuck it. Put y'all differences to the side, bro, because the, the Bay as a whole don't have no fucking unity, yep. and it's fucking ugly. You feel me? Like, like the South, whether I know they got politics and shit too, but I know that when it comes to this music shit, they put that shit together. Like, you feel me? Well, let me the East Coast, uh, let's, all let, the on shit. that note. Sorry to cut you off. No, you good. Um, on that note. Did you see that video with Gazi and Low Blood where they were discussing about how the Bay doesn't have any infrastructure for I, artists? I did. Do you agree or disagree with that? Um, I agree that as far as like, um, I think, I think it's, I, I think it's a such thing as gatekeepers. Mm. I think a lot of people don't, you know, they have the key to help people get further and they don't. You know what I'm saying? I feel like. People nut ride, dick ride, and fuck with certain people, and that's fucked up when it's a lot of talent. You know what I'm saying? A motherfucker will go fuck with somebody in a whole nother state before they fuck with somebody they see grinding right here in their own backyard. Facts. And I feel like that's what it be. You why do you me? think that is, though? Do you think what, like, why gatekeep? Um, they don't want somebody to succeed. It's like, it's like hater shit. It's like, I don't, I don't know. Cause I don't have that bone in my body to want to, like, See somebody doing this for all this time or just really talented and don't want to get them to another level or just want to put their folks on. They folks might not even be more talented. They folks might not even have as many rap skills. You know what I'm saying? But they'll put them on and just let this motherfucker like starve or something. Like people that bring artists out here from another state for a show, paying five bands. But you got a dope female, even a male rapper, you got a dope rapper out here in the Bay that's trying to get to that level and you won't put no money behind them and support them. It just be crazy to me. I just feel like people be... It's a lot of boo-boo rappers too. We ain't gonna <laughs> say that. But the ones that is doing their shit and really like putting in work and it's just like it's fucked up. You know what I'm saying? It's fucked up that you in a bay and you gotta go elsewhere to get on and then your home team, your home act like, oh, we been fucking with you. Nah. You feel me? So Do you have any advice for building a better infrastructure? Like where we could make something better. I mean, of course, you're not a manager, you're not a yeah. a label head, but like, what do you think would help the community as a whole? People coming together, putting okay. that ego to the side. People really like all the managers. You feel me? Um, a, a budget. You feel me? Mm. Putting a budget together. Put a budget behind the artist. You know what I'm saying? Right. Making them like that's what it takes. It takes fucking. It can't nobody do shit without a team. Yep. And people don't realize that. They think, oh, I'm, I'm self-made. I get this shit on my own. Nah, bro. The highest, the highest person up, Jay-Z will tell you, he didn't do shit without his fucking, without a team. I've Michael Jackson will tell you, tell you that. 
Yeah. Like motherfuckers ain't doing shit by themselves. So yeah. it's just like as a bay, I feel like we need to come together. And people that got money got a bag need to put their bags together. Like put a budget together. If like let's really do it. With it. If they really fuck with it. Mm-hmm. It's easy to weed out. It's easy to see who been staying consistent, who been doing that shit, who's solid. Like people are very intuitive. You could tell who's just trying to use you or come on for the ride when you already done made it. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's what I feel like needs to happen. Straight Definitely. Up. And I think that's I think that's a very good point as far as like people speak about wanting to build an infrastructure in the Bay or build like a support system, but nobody puts any work in as far as that goes. And that's think, even that's all that's all talk. Yeah, that's all, all talk. talk. Even videographers, even though they should come together and do a movie or you know what I'm saying? Like shit, it just be politics and people don't fuck with oh my shit look better, my shit this, my shit that. We got so much talent in the bay and it's fucked up that it's overlooked. And a lot of people steal our shit. Not only must steal, we influence a lot of shit and people don't give the bay its credit. You know what right. I'm saying? Like when you tell somebody, Oh, I'm from Cali, they automatically think LA. Nah, I'm from the Bay. Like, you feel me? So yep. It just be. It's weird. I seen that uh, you did a whole show with a bunch of female artists, and you got. Are you guys working on a project together, or what is that? I mean, we should be. That's okay. the. That was the goal. That was the and thing. Who are about those it. artists? Um, we have Tan the guy. We got um, Niche. You know what the fuck going on? Uh, we got Pretty Gang, T S Y T S A Ivy. We got her. Drop zone. Drop tip, zone right? Tiff. Mm-hmm. Um. How did yeah. that come about where like you guys were like, okay, let's did was this just like private conversations of like we want to Private put conversations. Together? I'm gonna be honest, motherfuckers feeling a certain type of way about uh dudes throwing these shows, mm. um, and not putting female certain females on. I'm all for all females winning and e- elevating and doing shit. Yeah. But a few females felt a certain type of way, like these niggas not giving us our flowers and let's do this shit ourselves. That's kinda, deep. Kind of got on some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? I never even thought about that though, because yeah. they're they're re- like when you really think about it, like there aren't a lot of shows that are just strictly female either. Yeah, not even yeah, not even just strictly females. Like like um, yeah, well, strictly female shit. There isn't. Or, yeah, you I know think what you I'm guys saying? did the first one that I've seen. Like, yeah, you don't even see that. Or like people, uh, and I'm all like I said, I'm all for everybody. Even if you just started rapping, I feel like what they were talking about was somebody throwing a show for some female rappers that don't have a name. Yeah. So basically, we're trying to give them a platform. And I get it. I'm not offended by that at all because everybody has to win. Everybody has to get their shine. Fact. So I just feel like uh, a few females came together and was like they wanted to start their own shit. And that's how Girl Cot came about. And that's dope too. You and what's that me? called? It's called the Girl Cot. Girl Cot. Like boycott, but we girl cotton. Um, Bro, I just I feel just like. Put when, that together. <laughs> yeah. When you. <laughs> girl Cot. Okay. When you. Because I was trying to figure that out, what that meant. Okay, got you. Yeah, when you, um, you know, I feel like when you're doing something, no, you don't have to downplay something else somebody else doing. You mm. feel me? Just do your shit. Don't worry about what the next motherfucker got going on. And that's where a lot of people be having shit fucked up. You know what I'm saying? I think that's such a good point, though. Because, yeah. like, a lot of people in the game think, if I win, nobody else can win. Yeah. Like, it's, no, we can all win. There's enough money. Money, shit ba- for it's enough supporters, it's enough bags, money, cars. Damn. It's enough all the shit, shows. It's enough everything for everybody to do their shit and don't worry about the next motherfucker. And I feel like a lot of artists do that too. Um, it's kind of not off topic, but like artists compare themselves to other artists, you know, in their journey and where they at with it. Like right. you got to be focused on what you got going on. I did. I used to do that a lot, like compare myself. Motherfuckers, come. I didn't see so many artists come and go. Motherfuckers come, and I'm like, damn, like how they getting all this shine and putting this work in for this long, and they don't respect me like that. You know what I'm saying? And then, then they disappear. You, you know, they, they skyrocket, then they gone. Burn you out. Me? So it's like, you know, I've been staying my, you know, my path. But yeah, I feel like that's what a lot of people be doing. So Good. And yeah, I definitely see that. Um, mm-hmm. As far as uh, we, I want to go just a little bit deep into this. Uh, as far as like, what does Legacy Studios mean to you with Luigi and everybody man, over there? Everything. I fuck with Lou, man. I love okay. Lou. He, um, I didn't been like I said, I didn't been to a lot of studios. It's still love with TC. That was my for home base for a long time. Um, I used to go to DEO studio, but I really feel like shout out DEO. Shout out DEO. Like yeah, I was fucking with him for a while. Um, I feel like legacy, like everything leads to where it's supposed to be, and I feel like that's my home base now. Like you know what I'm saying? The sound, me and his connection, the relationship. Um, he got a dope sound. Like a lot of people come to Lou for their mix and master for the to record. 
So I just feel like it's home. You know, I got that legacy on. You feel me? It, we locked in forever. So yeah, I fuck with Lou. Yeah, because I be seen I seen you working real tough up there, and I was just yeah. very curious. How did that relationship build? Like, when was the first time you went up there? Um, actually, uh. A few people tried to get me to, I was so locked in in the city. I'm like, I'm not going to Richmond. Because at that time, you know, for a minute, it was a, uh-huh. Richmond was not a place you want to go. Nah, hell so, uh, um, a lot of people tried to get me there. But the first time I went there was actually with Ama. Ama Rose. I used to rap with her. Um, shout out to Ama. And she brought me there for the first time. And then the first time I recorded, I was like, ooh, you got this new man? This mic? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm so like, crispy. shit, crispy. I'm like, oh, I like this studio. So that first time I went there, I did a feature for her, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I want to come back here. So it was dope. We was locked in ever since. Yeah, that's home base for sure. Yeah, I uh, he's Lou's got a lot of history in, especially in Richmond. Yeah, but also just around like, and especially nowadays, like I see a lot of people working with him. Yeah, so that is tight. And I remember the first time that you told me that you were recording in Richmond. I'm like, the fuck is she doing over there? I'm yeah. like, you know me because I'm from Richmond, so yeah, it just no, it's not, and it's no love lost or nothing. I'm still locked in with TC, still oh, locked yeah. in with Do. If I want to go there, it's cool. But you know, you know, you elevate and you grow and you find your way, and that's just how it go. Yeah, you gotta find the, you know, the sound. Find what's comfortable, right? Okay, um, let's let's get into this last question. What is in the future for So Vicious? Man, it's a, everything is bigger. Man, mm-hmm. everything is er. Everything is er at the end. Litter, mm-hmm. bigger. You know what I'm saying? I'm just doing more shows. You know, I didn't already did two shows this year. I didn't have sessions. You know, I'm locked in with my guys. I got my team. Shout out Alias, shout out Infinity Vids, shout out Dana Day, my MUA, shout out DJ Harmony. You know, it's just a team. We rocking and rolling around this motherfucker. I'm trying to travel. I'm going to be at South by Southwest in March. Dope. Um, That's just, big. Yeah, yeah. I've been there a few times, but you know, now I'm more elevated and more, you know, seasoned. So, yeah, it's going to be dope. I'm are just, you going to be performing or are you just going to go out there yeah, and network? Yeah, networking and performing. Ooh, we got shit lined up, you know lit. what I'm saying? It's going to be dope. I'm just uh, trying to do bigger shit. I'm trying to knock out projects, albums, collabs. Uh, I need a bag, though. You feel me? I that need part. I need a budget. I need I need something, man. People Tell can't them. just expect shit for free, man. You can't expect these artists to put their blood, sweat, and tears in this shit and don't pay them. That it's part. just not going to happen, bro. Like, I didn't, I didn't did my share of free shit, but now y'all have to pay me. Like, my value has went up, period. So that's pretty much it. I'm just working, you know, shooting videos, and, you know, that's it. Yeah, we we just you. doing bigger shit, man. Hey, I'm That's really it. proud of you though. You've been really doing your thing and staying consistent. So. Thank you. I'm proud of you too, though. Thank like, you. don't can't overlook you. You, you know doing me? your shit too. No, be like Kobe, man. We out. No, be like Kobe, <laughs> man. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for doing this interview. Um, where Appreciate can they check you. you out online, man? Y'all can follow. I'm everywhere like air, man. So mm. vicious official on Instagram. So vicious Google Play. So vicious is everywhere. Just type in and spell V I. C I O U S. So vicious, man. Tap in. Check me out, man. I'm everywhere. Thank you. Yep. Yee. Yee.